historical accuracy within the Gospels. Now, there has been an unbalanced, an, in, an injustice and an imbalance concerning the Gospels. Since Paul, a lot of biblical scholarship and historical Jesus studies was influenced by post-enlightenment thinking and was anti-church and so believed that it should get behind the Gospels and get to the true source material and it was to ignore the church's perspective on the Gospels but what that did is it began to take apart intricately analyzing every bit and part of the Gospels never accepting any of it as historically accurate now because of the 1920s when uh, Jew, Jewish scholars wrote the lives of Jesus from a Jewish perspective and that scholarship was discovered in the 1950s and 60s it began to dawn on scholars that Rudolf Bultmann and the form critics were actually not correct in their assessment of the Gospels. Bultmann assessed that the Gospels were actually uh, that the, he, he believed in Greek culture and that anything that was Jewish was not historically accurate but because of the revival of Jewish scholarship in the 50s and 60s scholars realized Bultmann and the form critics were wrong that there was actually a Jewish context to the Gospels what that did then it made scholars realize there was actually more historical content within the Gospels than was given credence my argument and, and contention against atheists and skeptics who would say that we look at the Gospels piecemeal that is the historical method and that we look at every individual bit and assess it on its merits is not completely fair because we won't do that with completely with ancient historians there'll be some ancient historians who are generally accurate and will take large chunks of what they're saying as accurate because we know that they would generally go and investigate and they would generally be be fair with their sources we might be spot various biases we might be able to spot indiscretion or compromises or whatever but we'll have a general trust of an author or not and I think the in, injustice with the Gospels is since the Enlightenment there was a utter radical skepticism and I think that pendulum that that legacy is with us today and I think it has to change I think there has to be a much more readiness to accept from the skeptics and from academics that the Gospels are generally trustworthy in the historical information and if that's the case it means you should be much more open to the data that is given about Jesus's miracles and about the resurrection so it's a case of do you take a skeptical position or do you take a more of innocent till proven guilty and I think the fair option in looking at the gospel documents is to say innocent till proven guilty rather than the radical skepticism that many skeptics use it's just a, a complete unfairness to the fact that we are finding continually the Gospels as being accurate historically that's a very important point a nuanced point in this debate on did Jesus rise from the dead it is true to say that we look at detailed historical data on their own terms but it is also true to say that there are some writers that we know are more trustworthy than others and so the question has to be up as we look at the detailed information are these writers trustworthy or not that has to be answered and the skeptics quickly put that under the carpet and don't put it up for debate because if they did if the evidence goes one way it means it's the end of the debate for the skeptic now 
if we look at the Gnostic Gospels, we can compare the difference between the four Gospels. And we can find that when the Gospels mention, um, for example, in contrast, we find the Gnostic texts do not anchor Jesus in historical time. For example, Pilate is not mentioned at all. Galilee comes only once in the Gnostic text. As for biblical Gospels, Pilate appears about 60 times. And I could go on and on and on about more information about that. So the Gnostic Gospels show that they have no real historical integrity whatsoever. Then finally, we find that the Gospels are rooted in eyewitness material. Richard Balcom says, It is the contention of this book that in the period up to the writing of the Gospel, Gospel traditions were connected with the name and known eyewitnesses, people who had heard the teaching of Jesus from, Jesus from his lips and committed it to memory, people who had witnessed the events of his ministry, death, resurrection, and themselves had formulated the stories about these events that they told. These eyewitnesses did not merely set going a process of oral transmission that soon went its own way without reference to them. They remained throughout their lifetime a source that may have varied for figures of central and more marginal significance, the authoritative guarantors of the stories they continued to tell, Richard Balcom, Jesus and the eyewitnesses, the gospel as eyewitnesses, Grand Rapids, Ehrman, 2006. Uh, in Richard Balcom's book, uh, basically, he's challenging the form critics the form critics would say, and a lot of skepticism would say, that Jesus developed as a myth by a competing number of storytellers, principally in the plural. There were these communities, who we don't know who they were, who wrote these stories about Jesus, and that's how things developed. In Noting the historical research of Papias, who is mentioned by Eusebius, and Papias mentions that he talks to the daughters of Philip and tries to get eyewitness material about Jesus Christ. Balcom also notes in ancient, uh, ancient historiography that since Polybius, uh, Polybius in 200 BC or maybe a bit more, believe that if you're going to be a good historian you have to look at eyewitness material. So based on these two researches, one uh, Papias and Eusebius, two uh, the research done on how ancient historians work uh, based on Berridge's book and also if you look at the four lectures of um, Dr. Balcom at Southern Baptist Theological Seminary on the Gospels as History, you'll get an understanding of this debate. So what you find is because of this research, there's a strong case that the Gospels are based on eyewitness material. You can see this in the Gospel of Mark and this is quoting uh, Richard Balcom. Mark writes in a similar way to historians of his time. He uses the narrative methods of inclusio, a historical method of his time. Peter is made central in this inclusio which means it is was the eyewitness material being etc. You can go into in depth look at this in Richard.